Hey everybody. Um, this video is going to be kind of a kind of a little bit different video. I feel like I say that a lot when I start these videos. I'm doing something a little bit different this time, but um, I know this is kind of be kind of a a hardware slash game review, but not really a review uh, video. And also, I think at the beginning, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of an update or a sneak peek of possible upcoming uh, videos in the future. So, if you want to get straight to probably what the title of this video is going to be, which is about the Matrux card. Uh, someone told me how to pronounce that correctly now, so I'm trying really hard. Matrux, um, the G400, and the game Expendables, and then EMB, whatever, bump mapping. Uh, I, if... I'll try to put a little link thing in the description. You can skip that. Uh, skip to that. But first off, for this video, uh, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of videos that possibly will be coming up in the future that I'll be doing. Uh, pad this video out a little bit. Um, so first off, uh, my last video, I talked about this guy. Uh, this is the Coleco Atom box, which is taking up a massive amount of space. Uh, I want to do a video on that system eventually. Uh, it's actually not fully working, but it is mostly working. Um, that guy there, which is a K-Pro PC. Interestingly, I picked this up uh, just like two days ago. Um, pretty cool, interesting machine. Uh, over there I have, that's a 286. That I'm working on uh, a little bit more standard. It's a 16 megahertz 286. I just want to do a video on. It's nothing special, not like OEM. I just put it together, but it's a little. I think maybe it's a little more representative of uh, 286 uh, rather than the really fast. Uh, there it is, 20 megahertz video on my 20 megahertz 286 when I did uh, Anatomy of a 286. Uh, video. Speaking of it, the Anatomy series, uh, I will be doing more of those in the future. The next one will probably be on that machine over there, if I can zoom in, and that will be Anatomy of an 8088, uh, so that guy. And then I'm going to start, change directions, go the other course, and I'm going to do like Anatomy of a Windows 95 machine, and then I'm going to do a couple Windows, like, like two probably Anatomy of a Windows 98 machine because uh, there's some variations I wanted to go over. And I'll probably do Anatomy of a new Windows XP machine, and that might probably be the end of that uh, series. Uh, that's one of the 98 machines. Move, buddy. Right there. Uh, also, same time I picked up the K-Pro PC, I also picked up that guy. You probably can't really see him. That is a G3 Macintosh. Uh, I've been looking for the desktop version for a while. Uh, I believe they call it the Outrigger case. Um, for a little while now, I've actually been looking for one of those. It's probably going to end up becoming my main, like, classic Mac machine. And that's really about it for the updates. You're probably wondering where the heck I get most of this crap. Um, you know, it's the usual. I mean, computers are expensive to ship, so for actual, like, computers, I don't really do the eBay thing. Um, I try to go local for machines, uh, so thrift stores... Um, Goodwill never doesn't have computers anymore. I guess they ship them somewhere. They've done that for a while. Uh, like you can get lucky sometimes. Sometimes I find things, you know, like uh, keyboard computers, uh, like like Tandy Cocos and stuff. I, I guess they, maybe they think they're typewriters or something. Um, but usually st places like you know bomb and pop thrifts or like places like Savers, which do take computer stuff. But a lot of things like this one in the Mac. Um, like once a month in my area, there's a, like a swap meet and it's an electronic swap meet. Um, so they just like people come and they just donate and they bring in uh, computers. And I that's where I get a lot of my computers for really cheap. Um, other than, you know, like Craigslist and offer up and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, I guess that concludes the uh, update part of this video. So now I would like to move on to the meat and potatoes, which is we're going to be talking about the um, Matrox G400, and then we're going to be talking about the game Expendable. Uh, not that Expendable. Uh, <laughs> Expendable. All right, let's get into that. Okay, so here is the Matrox G400. Uh, Mac. So before I get into this, though, I, I like to give a quick shout out or, or you know, just an acknowledgement that um, there is a YouTube channel that already did a pretty good video on uh, this card and this game. 
um, and that's Phil's computer lab, and uh, he does some very kind of uh, professional looking videos, uh, pretty much the opposite of what I do. Uh, very good, nice camera, uh, you know, very well done professionally type videos, so, uh, you know, I'd go check that video out if you know, after mine, if you're interested in this card and the game and stuff like that. Although I think I'm going to go into the game itself uh, a little bit more than he did. Um, his videos, he does tend to, to do a little bit more of the mixing with like new technology with the old, um, you know, like making it 3D6 with modern parts and stuff, which uh, not quite the purest as I am, a little bit heretical, uh, but uh, still pretty good, well done videos. Um, so anyways, enough about that. Let's talk about this card and why I'm going to talk about this card. Um, so this is the G400, this is the Max version. Now Matrux wasn't really known for their gaming uh, video cards. They're really more known for uh, cards that were better for like things like CAD, like computer assisted design, uh, stuff like that, because they had very good uh, image quality, especially like 2D image quality. Um, now the G400, this came out in 1999, and this was more of an attempt of, uh, by them to make more of a gamer's card, and they kind of succeeded. It's a pretty good card, it's very fast. I believe it's the first card to do AGP times 4. Um, now this is the Max version. So there was the regular G400, and then there was the G400 Max. And the Max had, you know, better, faster memory. I think it's 32 uh, megabytes of SG RAM, uh, just a faster core. I believe I believe the RAM was 200 megahertz. The VGA core is uh, 150 megahertz on the Max. Uh, the Max, you can usually tell if it's a Max because the Max came with a fan, whereas the regular G400 didn't. Um, it had something called dual head where you could uh, output to two displays at once. Uh, it's just, it's a pretty good card. It really held, uh, you know, toe to toe with like the Voodoo 3 and the uh, TNT 2. Maybe not quite as good, but you know, it could do 32 bit color. Uh, just a really decent card. Uh, the drivers were kind of iffy, uh, and that's what kind of held it back. But decent card, and it still had that excellent uh, 2D and image, just general image quality uh, advantage over its comp competition. Um, so what's so special about this card, or at least what used to be special? Um, so what this card did, it was the first card, as far as I know, to employ and uh, be able to do uh, EMBM, uh, environmental, wait, yeah, environmental, mapped bump mapping. Ah, so what is that? Uh, well, that is just an ability to, it, you know, it just makes some textures look better. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't implemented in a lot of games. Um, if you go to the blob, <laughs> the blob, if you go to the blog, I have a short list of games that, um, are, you know, we're supposed to uh, use this feature. And, it, you know, usually it was used very subtly. Some games you can't even really tell when it's being used. Um, but other games you can, uh, like the game I'm going to talk about a little bit later, Expendable. Um, a lot of times it was used for water effects. It made the water look a lot more realistic. Um, so that technology, uh, Matrix licensed the technology. They didn't come up with it. And for a long time, uh, their cards were the only cards to be able to uh, to use this. It wasn't NVIDIA, I don't know about ATI or Radeon, but I know... Um, NVIDIA, it wasn't until the GeForce 3 that their cards had that ability. So for a, a good couple of years there, you could really only fully experience games that had the environmental bump mapping, I'll just call it that, uh, feature. You had to have one of these Matrix cards. And generally, one of the best ones to have was this, the, uh, the G400 Max, because it was really the fastest. Um, I believe there's a later card, and I'm going to kill of the pronunciation. It's like the paraphernalia or the paraphala or the paramela or something. Uh, I think that one's a little bit faster than this and it could also do it, but it was a lot more expensive too. Uh, I could be wrong there. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that was really, it was a, you, you had a reason if you collected in video cards or you wanted like to play the best version of certain games, um, this was, you ha wanted to have this card in your collection so you could really get the most out of those games. Games like Expendable, uh, Dungeon Keeper 2, uh, which I believe used the effect for water. Uh, Command & Conquer Renegade supposedly also used it, but it was a little bit later game and it actually, you could use cards other than the Matrix cards, uh, for that one. So, what game are we going to talk about uh, 
with this card? Well, that is going to be Expendable, so let me get that for you. Okay, so this is the big box version of Expendable. Now, originally I believe this was an arcade game. It's from Rage. I believe they're a uh, UK developer. And uh, this may sound familiar if you have a Dreamcast or a Dreamcast fan, because there was a port to the Dreamcast called Millennium Soldier Expendables, or Expendables Millennium Soldiers. Now, that port, as far as I know, uh, isn't really as good as the big PC version. I believe it, you know, the graphics aren't quite as good. Um, I believe it's missing a couple things too. Like there's a, in the first stage, there's a part where there's like a billboard and it's flashing messages and stuff. And I don't think that's in the Dreamcast version. Um, also, I don't think the Dreamcast version has, you can select like higher resolutions like you can with the PC version. So there's that. Um, so that's one reason to maybe go with the PC version. Um, so now this game, I don't think it really came out in North America, at least not in anything but a jewel case version. I had to import this from the UK because I want the big box version. Okay, so what is this game about? Well, I will show you that um, <laughs> when I go into, I'll, I'm gonna show you some game footage. So before we get into this game and not really a review, but me just kind of talking about it. Um, let me take it out. See, it's got a nice little, I just wanted to open the box real quick and just show you guys. Uh, here's the, the jewel case. Uh, the CD's not in it because I'm actually still playing the game. And you get the nice box on X and it's an actual manual. Nice manual. So yeah. Um, so what machine will I be playing this on? Well, I, I'm playing this on a very uh, late. Uh, socket A motherboard. Um, it's an. Uh, I, I write it down. I wrote the thing. That, the motherboard I'm using is an Ace Rock or As Rock uh, K7V T4A Pro, which is a really nice uh, kind of like late model uh, socket A motherboard. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of socket A. Uh, I don't like how they don't have a heat spreader built into the chips, and I've actually killed more than one of those chips trying to put on a heat sink. Uh, but this board, you know, it's very late model. It has all the bells and whistles. It has AGP times eight. It has uh, ATA-133, which I'm using, uh, you know, I have installed like an eight, um, uh, Max Tor ATA-133 hard drive. Uh, you know, it has SATA on it, although early SATA could be kind of buggy. You know, it's got all the bells, USB 2.0, um, all that good stuff. Um, so that is the motherboard I'm playing on. Now, the, um, I'm running on an Athlon XP2500 Plus, which uses the Barton Core, which is the later socket A CPU. It's running at 1.833 megahertz. Um, overkill for this game. Overkill for a game, which really calls for, at the best, uh, a Pentium to 450 megahertz. So massive overkill, uh, but I wanted to make sure that I was getting everything out of the uh, GPU. So there's that. So that is the system I'll be playing it on. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to show you some screenshots here. Uh, first, I'm going to show you what the game's like, just standard retail without the uh, bump mapping enabled. Then I'm going to show you it with bump mapping enabled. Then we're going to talk about demo, uh, you know, like benchmarks, crap like that. And then I'm going to tell you about a recent patch that lets you play it on non-Matrix cards. And then I'm going to talk about the game a little bit, and then we'll be done. So we're we're looking, we're all good here. Okay, so before we start talking about, you know, like setting up the patch and then talking about the game proper, I just want to show you some uh, footage of the first stage. Now, this is retail. This is without the uh, environmental bump mapping patch or anything. And I'll just point out uh, what's going to be different. Um, it'll become pretty obvious in a minute. This is kind of a, a run-and-gun shooter game, kind of over-the-top, uh, you know, third-person run-and-gun shooter game. Kind of fun, uh, mindless game. But um, here we go, starting off. Uh, I'll show you in a minute what to look for when we do apply the patch. Okay, now, if you look off to the side, like where it looks like water would be, it looks like just like gray mist with like, you can see some like drops uh, in it. That's just, that that is where we're going to see the most improvement and difference when the environmental bump mapping patch is applied. See, it's just kind of like, just like a gray soup. Um, it also improves some other things, like this vehicle coming in and crashing, it improves the textures on it uh, a little bit. 
Um, but mostly we're going to see the big difference in water effects and it's going to be a big difference. So uh, let's talk about what we should do first before we apply the patch. So first thing, you want to make sure you're, you're using the right drivers. You don't want to use too new of drivers. Uh, I use drivers version 5.52.015. Um, you can also look at the blog. I have a, a link to the download of those drivers. So a little bit early. You don't want to use the latest uh, Matrux drivers. Now the second thing you want to do is you want to download a program called PowerStrip. And I'm using version 2.78. And you want to disable VSync in the advanced options. Um, now what this does, this this could, this, you know, it speeds up your frame rates, but it also can uh, cause some screen tearing. Although in all my playing in this game, I didn't really notice any uh, screen tearing. Uh, so I think it's pretty safe to, uh, you know, disable the V-Sync with this utility. Uh, that will help uh, offset the uh, frame rate hit you take from uh, enabling the bump mapping. Uh, just a quick CPU-Z. I'm using Windows 98. That's really what the game was meant to play on with 512 megabytes of DDR RAM, uh, just so you know. All right, here we go. And I have uh, in your options with video, I have the details on high and bump mapping enabled. I'm also using a, a Diamond Monster MX300 card. It uses the Vortex 2 chip. I would suggest using uh, the Vortex 2 chip. It, it uh, This game supports it. You can select it in settings. It does really good with like uh, positional 3D uh, audio. So this is with the patch applied. Um, Keep in mind, it, the patch seems to be a little picky. I was getting a lot of errors and memory errors until I uh, updated my chipset. Now you can notice right away the difference. Look where that weird gray soupy mist uh, was, and you'll notice it now actually looks pretty nice, like you know, like actual water. Um, if I actually go over, that you can see. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, see, big difference. Um, yeah, big difference there. That, that's how, you know, the bump mapping worked in a lot of games. It was really for, uh, it really was used a lot with water effects. Um, like in this game, you can really tell the difference. I, I've heard a lot of people say in a lot of games when they have it enabled, they can't even really, really tell. Um, but you can really tell in this game. Just playing through it a little bit. It also does some other stuff. Like I think um, for some of the, like, the ground vehicles, there's like tread marks behind them. Uh, that's using the uh, bump mapping uh, ability as well. But yeah, there's that water. It looks, looks really nice. Yeah, there's some tread marks there on the ground, if you can see. Uh, I don't believe those show up when you don't have uh, bump mapping enabled. Alright, so here's the game running with the uh, built-in time demo or benchmark, and this is running the, uh, the Matrux G400 Max card, and as you can tell, it it you know this is with uh, VSync disabled. This is with environmental bump mapping, as you can tell if you look at the water uh, enabled, and it runs well. Um, you know, it, it's not like you know super 100 plus frame rate, but you know it holds it holds at least you know a steady uh, 30 above uh, frames per second. You know, there wasn't a point playing the game, and, and I played the game quite a bit at this point, uh, where I was like, wow, there's some slowdown going on, this, you know, I need to, to squeeze out some more frames per second. There was really never uh, any times where that happened w using the uh, the Matrix card. And for all the uh, game footage capture that you see here, I am using the Matrix card. But that, that leads me to talking about the patch, well, the patch to the patch. Um, Lately there was a topic about this game on uh, Vogons, uh, actually I believe it started by Phil when he, for, from Phil's Computer Lab when he was doing his video on this game and the uh, Matrix cards. And uh, the, the thing with these games, um, and this game in particular, is they need, as I said earlier, they need the Matrix card to run. And it's not because later cards, uh, like starting with the GeForce 3 and up, couldn't do the bump mapping. It was when you ran the game, it actually checked to see if you were running a Matrix card. If you weren't running a Matrix card, it just it wouldn't run the executable. It wouldn't run the game. Um, and that is why you needed a Matrix card. Well, uh, someone over at Vogan's, uh, Vogan's user, he modified the patch to disable the check. Um, so if you go to my blog, there is a link to that patch. Um, the page that hosts that patch 
and it, you apply it just like the regular patch, which is you just unzip it into the main uh, folder for the game. And uh, what it does then, it allows you to play the game with cards other than the Matrix cards. Uh, I played a good bit of this game with a, a GeForce a TI-4200, I believe. So it's a GeForce 4 card. Um, and it ran great. I didn't see any errors. I didn't see any problems. Um, you know, he says that it's an alpha patch and the game will crash when you exit the game. My game didn't even crash uh, when I exited the game. It, it ran just like if it was, uh, you know, if I was running on the uh, G400 Max. Um, and I did run the time demo with that card, and I got pretty crazy uh, frames per second. It was it was pretty high, um, and I was running it at a, at, the, at a higher resolution. See, the thing um, that I forgot to mention is. Uh, because of the limited memory with the Max card, uh, it's 32 megabytes of RAM, you can only run it in, um, hold on, let me hear it. look here, I have the, okay, when you're using the Max card, um, really the highest you could run it at, because of the memory limitations, was 1024 times 768 in 32-bit uh, color mode, but when I was using the, uh, the GeForce, you know, I, you could use the highest, which is 1920 times uh, 1440 32-bit color mode. And with the Max, I got an average of uh, 47 frames per second when I, I did the test over. And even running at the higher resolution with the GeForce 4, I was getting a 76 frames per second average. So, uh, yeah, it, it, you, you know, there, that is the one plus uh, with using a non-Matrix card. So, I mean, really with this patch and this game, there's really no reason to run it on the G400 Max anymore uh, if you have something like a GeForce 3 or up available. Alright, and now I'm going to talk about uh, the game itself and what I think about it. Um, as far as story goes, uh, there's not really too much of a story. I, I mean, th there's a write-up in the manual and stuff about it, which I didn't read, but I, it has to do something with aliens. Um, I mean, and you're like some kind of like universal soldier or super soldier born to fight type character, I believe. At least that's what I got from the intro movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really... The story doesn't matter in a game like this. This is really just kind of a fun, arcadey, like overhead, run-and-gun shooter. Um, it really, it kind of puts me in mind of something from like the PlayStation 1 days, but like, you know, looking a whole lot better than that. Um, you know, I had a, a lot of fun with that. Uh, there, there are some bad things, which I'll go into in a minute. Um, but, I mean, overall it's just kind of like a fun, turn your brain off, kind of run around, blow stuff up, shoot everything in sight uh, sort of game. Uh, you know, there's a variety of different weapons, you know, I, I like, uh, personally I like the Gatling gun, there's kind of like a, a spreader type gun, you've got missiles, and, uh, you know, you got your grenades and all that stuff, so, I mean, the weapon's good, um, the music and sound is, is decent, uh, it, it gets the job done, uh, like I said, um, it does support the Aurel Vortex 2 chip, so, uh, I would suggest you get a card like that, because it does do, uh, like, 3D spatial surround sound or something, um, you don't even need a surround sound. I just have two speakers set up. It still works well with like uh, headphones and whatnot. So uh, yeah, you get yourself something like a Diamond Monster uh, MX300 or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of good cheap cards out there that use the Vortex 2 uh, chip. But um, yeah, it's just it's just a fun running around, uh, blowing stuff up game. You know, fighting aliens and stuff like that. Um, there there are some downsides. Um, I mean, you could definitely tell this was an arcade game. There, There's a time limit, uh, which is annoying. I didn't find myself running out of time too often, but it does happen. And when it happens, it's annoying. You lose a life, and then it like starts you back with like 60 seconds or something. And uh, yeah, each stage has this time limit, and it's just... It, it's annoying. I don't like time limits personally. Um, I can see why it would be needed in an arcade thing, but you know, this is the home version and it's still there, and it's just, it's annoying. I don't like the time limit thing. Um, <laughs> uh, probably the worst thing about this game is the controls. The controls are terrible. Terrible. Um, I felt like the game was unnecessarily difficult because of the controls, and I was constantly fighting the controls. Maybe it's just me. Um, maybe I just can't get a grip on how the control scheme works. 
Um, not, I mean, the game gives you options on how to do this. You can do it purely keyboard. You can set up your keys. Uh, you can do keyboard mouse, or you can do a gamepad. Um, I found easiest for me was a gamepad, and I used a later uh, USB Gravis gamepad that kind of looks like a PS1 controller, but without the analog sticks. And that worked best for me, but I could never get a handle on it. I mean, the best I can describe it is kind of like Resident Evil tank controls in like a fast-paced run-and-gun shooter. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really work. It's one of those games where uh, up, you know, moves you forward, back moves you back, but left and right turns you. So you, if you press right, you you don't move, but you like turn right. And I don't know. I mean, maybe this would work with some kind of like dual analog setup. I mean, I don't know how it controls on the Dreamcast. I haven't heard uh, any complaints, so I'm assuming it controls okay on the Dreamcast. But like, I don't know. I couldn't get get a handle on the controls for the PC version. I mean, the best way I could describe it is just frustrating. There were so many times where I would just meander into this group of enemies because I just couldn't control it right, or into into fire, um, you know, or landmines. Landmines were really difficult, or even just, like, stationary laser fences. Like, I go up to them, and I, I'm planning to walk past them, and I just can't control the character right, and he does, like, a U-turn right into a freaking laser fence, and he's disintegrated, and I lose a life. Uh, so, it's just fighting with the controls is the most annoying part of this game. Um, as you can see up there too, it, it changes pers uh, perspective sometimes. Sometimes it's kind of like, it goes in these scenes where it's like kind of like behind the back shooting, which is kind of neat to mix things up. Um, I like it. I like the visuals of this game. It's it's a little more like old school polygon uh, you know, visuals, but I think it, it holds up pretty decently. Um, even though it's you know it's an older game, obviously it's a well over a decade now old, but I think the visuals uh, hold up, especially on the PC with you know the higher resolution and, and a decent uh, you know 32-bit color and whatnot. Um, you know the the save system, eh, you save after every level you you save, so you can't save like in the middle of a mission, at least not that I could see. Um, and you have like credits and lives, uh, so changing the difficulty level. I think you have like three lives and then you die and then you have to do a continue. It, it, it works that way, kind of an older, old school kind of way uh, there. And I think like on normal difficulty you get like three continues, so that's like one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, that's like nine lives. It might be a little bit more than that. Now, from what I could tell, like changing it to beginner or like changing it to the hardest level, it doesn't make the enemies tougher uh, as far as I could tell or add more, it just gives you more or less lives and continues. Um, Another thing I didn't really like about the game is sometimes I, you didn't really know where to go. Like, see the scene that's showing right now? It took me forever to figure out I had to go around and then go into, like, a, a portal thing to progress the game. Um, I, I mean, I could see some people just seeing it right away and not having a problem with it, but it, there were a couple parts where it wasn't exactly, like, super clear on where to go next. Um, there, were, <laughs> there were other couple parts parts like the part that's up here now which this is actually a boss battle uh, each stage ends in a boss battle and this uh, well it's not to it yet but it was like there's like a series of teleporters and enemies keep coming up and you have to blow up the teleporter device uh, but I just could not aim I could not I could not get to it okay it must be a little bit further than I was thinking here but yeah, it's you have to use these like laser guided rockets and I just could not figure out the aiming. I swear I lost like nine or ten guys on that boss just because I could not figure out here it is, these teleporter things. I could not figure out how to aim and like hit them. It was really frustrating. And there's there's a couple moments I mean that I think that has to do with the whole control aspect of the game and just having kind of a hard time controlling this game. Yeah, so in conclusion, um, Expendables is a, is a fun game. I think uh, you know using a card and uh, doing the patch that enables the bump mapping, whether you go with a, a Matrix card like it was intended, or you use the patched patched uh, patched patch uh, to play it on a later card for better frame rate and higher resolution, uh, it's it's a fun game. It's a fun just run and shoot and blow and stuff up game. Yeah, the controls are frustrating, but you can kind of look past it. It's not. I mean, the game is so sort of just mindless run and gun that you can you know you, you can kind of look past that a little bit there's I know there's a ton of stages I've only gotten to like stage 10 or so uh, something like that I think there's like 30 stages but yeah it's a fun game um, like I said if you want the complete box version you're gonna have to import it from the UK 
Uh, I don't think it's super rare. I think I paid like 30 bucks for mine. Uh, I don't know what they go for now. That was only that wasn't even a year ago. Um, but I think you might be able to get like a jewel ver case version in the U.S. pretty cheap or, or something like that. Um, you have to watch though. I think the bump mapping patch only works with the full retail version. So watch out for that. Um, I think that's the case. But anyways, yeah, it, it's a fun game. It's worth a little bit of effort to uh, set up the bump mapping. Uh, it, you know, it helps with some of the effects, makes the game look a little bit nicer. But if you have the chance, I'd, I'd recommend playing it. Maybe even try the uh, Dreamcast version, although I think it, that might be the inferior version. Although, hey, I haven't played it, so maybe it controls a lot better, and that might m make up for the... Uh, for the you know the, the visuals not being quite as good as the PC version so uh, that's about it for this video thank you for watching uh, if you liked it subscribe thank you all again uh, for watching my videos um, have a good one